instead of focusing on the thing that you're going after, whether it's success or money or the perfect relationship or you know whatever, instead of focusing on that, focus on becoming the person for whom that simply becomes a natural outcome, a natural consequence. It's about being the person, not obsessing on the result. The easiest way to distill this idea of becoming the person rather than fixating on the process or going after the result is through a little idea that I've come up with called the three Ps. And the three Ps are physical, personal, and professional. Now the three Ps started as this, I don't even remember the first time I said it. It was like this little thing I said when I was just trying to come up with a catch-all term for you know, all areas of life to develop holistically, to develop, you know, to be fulfilled across all the different buckets of life that, that drive, you know, happiness and fulfillment and success and all that. And it just kind of rolled out one day, the three P's, physical, personal, and professional, and it's stuck. And then it's ended up becoming a hallmark of, for me and for my education company, Entra, and all my trainings. And I guess it's catchy and it's effective because it's just so damn simple, right? Physical, personal, and professional. And as soon as that started to get traction, I wanted to take it a lot deeper. And really, since then, I've architected a framework, uh, almost a, a blueprint. In fact, I have a course called the Entre Blueprint that you know, start in large part dissects these three Ps. It has some other stuff too. But this is really like a blueprint for how you can build your entire life so that whatever your goal is, whatever is it is you're trying to achieve, it just becomes, it not only becomes uh, you know, almost inevitable or, or natural for you to achieve that, but it makes it so that it happens in a way that isn't narrow and obsessive and counter and, and you not know, counterproductive, but like destructive. It's not like, oh, I'm going after this thing. And so these other parts of my life are going to suffer. The three P's gives you a framework for going after anything, but making sure while at the same time you're going after the one thing, all things, all the things that matter are lifting up. So let me give you the definitions of what I mean when I talk about each of these areas of life. The physical area of life is about building and optimizing and maintaining body and mind. So if it's your physical body or it's your mental mind, mental mind, is that something that needs to be said? Your physical body or your mind, you're building it, you're maintaining it, and you're optimizing it to perform better over time. That is what I mean by physical, and that includes some things that I'll, I'll dissect that you might not immediately think um, are physical. You might think they're personal. Then we have our personal life. And this is very simple. This is relationships involving direct connection and impact. What are the relationships that involve direct connection and impact? Not indirect. Indirect would be like, oh, somebody watched some of my content. I mean, and, and they, you know, were moved to do a thing or whatever. Like right now, although I feel very connected to you because you're this intimate eye looking right into my eyes. The reality is this is indirect impact. Like I'm not touching you, I'm not giving you a hug, we're not meeting in person. I'm not directly building a relationship with you and making a direct impact on you. So this actually would be part of professional, we'll get to that. But personal is relationships involving direct connection and impact. And then, not surprisingly, professional is still defined in terms of relationships. It's not defined as your job, it's not defined as how you make money, it's not defined as you know, your career, your volunteer work, it's just defined as a set of relationships involving indirect connection and impact. And then I say, also known as your value exchange with the world. So the way you exchange value with the world, not with your friends, not with your family, not with the direct relationships, but indirectly, the way you exchange value with the world is through relationships uh, and still through connection and still through impact. And ultimately that is your value. So when you get into success and, or achievement or whatever it is that you're trying to, to get in life, it's usually going to be an exchange for some sort of value given. And so the professional uh, category, that's usually where achievement happens, right? Or success happens. And so this is where, remember, I started by saying that I think a lot of people are really obsessed with going after the thing. They're trying to get the result. Instead of, I, I said they should focus on becoming the person who will naturally get that result. In other words, instead of trying to get the, the result of the value or get the value to be given to you, it's about becoming of such value that it's you have the value to transact for whatever outcome it is that you're looking to get. That's, that's kind of how that formula works. And so 
the, the bold statement is really a statement about the professional category of life because that's where most of the success and achievement that people are going after um, really lives. But what happens a lot of times, especially on the internet, this is like rampant on the internet, is people reverse it. And because they're trying to make more money, or even because they're trying to, let's, let's even say it's in the personal category, have better relationships. Like I'm going online, I wanna date, or I wanna know how to fix my marriage, I wanna have a better relationship. They're tending to take whatever is their priority, whatever is their most important thing in their mind, whatever their goal is, and they're making it the center of their universe. They're making it the center of their focus. And so the three P's model, it's not just about organizing your life in these three categories and defining those three categories. It's actually about putting them in their proper sequence. So when I, when I illustrate this in trainings, I always draw it as three concentric circles. You have physical at the center, then you have personal as the next rung, then, or the next ring, then you have professional as the outer ring. So physical, personal, professional. And this order is really, really important. To put it bluntly, you are more likely to make a million dollars if you take care of your body first. You are more likely to have a happy marriage if you take care of your body first. And thinking physical, then personal, then professional, you are more likely to make a million dollars if you take care of your marriage first. And you're more likely to take care of your marriage first if you take care of your body first, right? Physical, personal, professional. And to put that bluntly, I'll say this. The body, when we talk about maintaining and op, building, maintaining and optimizing body and mind, the, the physical part of life, we're basically talking about energy. It's all about how you manage energy. In other words, you can't outperform your energy level. You can't outthink your energy level. You can't outachieve your energy level. If you don't manage your energy, you cannot be successful. That is why physical is at the center. And, then, and you can't be successful in anything. You can't be successful in personal relationships. You can't be successful in, in your professional life. And then I, I believe the next ring being personal is that if you can't manage your direct relationships well, if you're not effective with your family and your friends and, and the, pe the way, in other words, if you're not effective at how people feel when they come into personal contact with you, you don't deserve to be successful professionally. So if you're not maintaining, your, if you're not tending to physical, you can't be successful. If you're not tending to personal, you don't deserve to be successful. You know, I think I, I I hear these people, I see these people, I talk to these people where they're like, I, I just need to make a lot of money. And I'm like, well, okay, let's dig into your life. Like, how are your, how's, how are things with your kids? How are things with your spouse? How are things with their parent? And their, their personal life is a mess. And I'm like, okay, what is actual, what is professional success? Professional success is delivering value to the market in such a way that the market appraises that value and exchanges with you equal value that such that it meets all your goals, it makes all the money you want, or it gives you all the stuff you want, or you get all the accolades you want, or whatever, right? You have all the impact you want. Well, if you can't deliver value to positively impact seven people close to you, how on this earth does it, does it translate that you're gonna have value to deliver to impact seven million people all out there in the world that are gonna exchange value with you or be positively impacted with you in such a way that all your hopes and dreams are gonna come true. It's literally illogical. If you can't tend to the home front, you don't, I don't think you've earned the right to want value in exchange on, the, on the, the earth front or the market front. And I'll tell you when this really, really clicked in for me, I was mid thirties, I guess. Um, so it was like six, seven years ago. And it was, you know, and I, I'd had these ideas for a long time. I'd had this, this on and off again relationship with health and fitness. I'd get really into it. And I would notice that there'd be these phases in my life where I was really putting my body and my health first and everything just seemed to go better. I see, I mean, literally I was a pianist for a, in my twenties and like I would play the piano better when I had like been going to the gym. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And all, relationships would get better. I'd be in a better mood. Um, so I'd like kind of dabbled with this and then I'd, I got real into personal development in my late twenties. Um, so I really started working on myself, working on my, how I connected and communicated with people developing. I, I, I'd been to coaches. I went to therapists. I sort of identified some areas of areas for improvement. I started act proactively working on empathy and gratitude. And so I kind of been piecemealing this notion together, but when it really emerged as like a holistic framework and I said, I will. I will basically commit my daily living to this framework. The three piece framework was in my mid thirties when my wife's first, my wife's mom, and then my wife's dad within a, a span of a couple years, they both 
uh, tragically got cancer. And in both cases, we were very close to them. And I had to, I got to, I would say, be there, be present, be very involved as they physically wasted away and died. And I got to be a big part of the support for them, uh, for their family, for our family, um, you know, financially, circumstantially, you know, our house became kind of a gathering place as these things went on. And I really got to see the interplay through all of that of physical, personal, and professional, and how literally if you don't have strength on all three of those fronts, you don't have strength at all. And that they do manifest, they do sort of expand outwardly in that fashion. At the end of the day, there was no amount of personal and, and professional success or results that could offset a physical decline. And it just, it just, that was when I just became really obsessed with this focus. And, and so a few years later, in 2018, I started shooting these videos. And if you're, you know, you're here on my YouTube channel or my Facebook um, page or whatever, you can go back to the beginning and really see this process start in fall of 2018. I started shooting these videos. And like I said, I, I was always searching for a way to convey this idea, this three P's concept, which I didn't have that, that language at the time, but this idea of a holistic framework for success. And I feel like wherever you go for success, it tends to be, uh, or wherever you go for guidance, on, especially online, because I'm an online marketer, that's, that's my world. It tends to be uh, kind of myopic, right? And whenever you go, you know, hey, how do I make more money? That's, that's a big one that people are looking for. It's like, well, here's how to be a better salesperson. Here's how to be a, a you know, better operator, a better project manager. Here's how to be a better developer. Here's how to be even, even the, the more broadly entrepreneurial training. Here's how to run a business more effectively. Nobody was talking about how you communicate. Nobody was talking about empathy. Nobody was talking about um, you know, managing your body and your energy supply. Nobody was talking about habits and nutrition. Nobody was having an integrated conversation about all this. And I feel like that's, you know, I don't know if that's a, that's through deliberate kind of like willful deception, like, oh, we're going to leave some pieces out so it doesn't intimidate people or just people themselves not realizing how big the puzzle really has to look to be complete. But uh, I, I started having the whole conversation. And as I stumbled into this three P's uh, vernacular, you know, millions suddenly, not suddenly, I mean, it took time, it took almost a year, but like after a year, there were a couple million people that had watched the videos and we're starting to resonate and anyway, we built a course and kind of grew from there, um, building this, this holistic framework for business and entrepreneurial development. But again, it's really about achieving anything you want in life. So in the rest of this video, I'm gonna dig deeper into how you can start to balance uh, the three P's elements of life and, and not just balance. I don't always just love that word balance because you can have a balance of low performance. You can say, well, I'm low over here and I'm low over there, so I'm balanced. No, I, I call it like a balance of of excellence or a balance of fulfillment. I wanna, I wanna be pushing for a balance of high performance across all these fronts. But before I dig into that, I wanna just, I, I wanna just get something out of the way. I know that for a lot of people, you might hear this and go, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds nice. But when the rubber meets the road, when you're in the daily living of your life, it is, you are going to be constantly bombarded with temptation to not look at things this way. You're gonna go, the life is gonna be full of reasons to say, okay, I should skip my workout today, I should get up early and I should just cram for this project because if I get the project done, I can close the deal and I can make millions of dollars. You're going to always be hit with reasons to take shortcuts and to, to degrade this formula. And what I will tell you is the, the antidote to that is to always step back and look at the bigger picture. If you are, see, if you are feeling like it makes sense to shortchange this model, it's because you're looking at life in, in the too narrow or the too short-sighted, when you really, really, really play the long game with your life, there is never a reason to shortcut yourself physically, personally, or professionally. So how do you optimize physical, personal, and professional areas of life? We're gonna go through three basic steps here. First, we're gonna talk about eliminating blockers. Then we're gonna talk about eliminating blockers to, to success and optimization in those areas. Then we're gonna talk about um, actually breaking these areas apart into their components so that we can work on them individually. Then we're going to develop what I call key performance indicators or KPIs, which are typically you use KPIs in business, but what we're gonna do is actually develop KPIs in the physical, personal, and professional areas of our life. So again, we're gonna eliminate blockers, 
then we're gonna break these areas of life into their components, and then we're gonna develop KPIs for each component. Let's talk blockers. To each their own, I can't tell you what, what your blockers are, but I think most people, if they sit down for 10 minutes, take a beat, do an honest uh, self-assessment, and say, okay, physically, what are the things that are in the way of my physical success? And if you're, usually it's obvious, and usually it's just kind of like one or two big ones. Um, if you get stumped on this, you can do it again. We can circle back to it after we break them into their individual components, because then it, it makes it more granular and it might be more easy to identify blockers. But my experience is usually, you don't need to go that deep. People know what their blockers are. So we want to identify blockers and feel free to like take a sec, write them down, you know, on a piece of paper, type them on a notepad, text them to a friend, whatever. Hey, these are the things that are in the way of my physical success. These are the things that are interfering in my personal relationships. And sometimes it might be a personal relationship that's interfering with your personal relationships. We'll cross that bridge, that's a tough one. Um, and then some, obviously on the professional side, uh, it can be a number of things. And again, as we break it into its component parts, it might become more obvious what those things are. But I want you to, before we even break anything apart, I want you to do a basic assessment of what those blockers might be. Take a minute, write that down. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to let you know you can get a free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut, which shows you the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy. And there's a special link just for this episode in the description. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Okay. Now, let's talk about the component parts of each of these areas. So, physical, what are the things that make up the physical area of your life? They are diet, exercise, biochemistry, neurochemistry, and what I call solitary spirituality. And this is where the lines, I don't always organize the lines where people maybe necessarily expect. So let's walk through those real quick. Diet, it's what you eat. And, and we're not gonna, this video, I mean, again, I have a whole course that starts with this framework and even that course, there's micro courses that derive from it. I mean, you can go really, really deep with this, but just at a high level for purposes of a, of a YouTube video, diet, exercise, you know, diet is obviously what goes in your body. And actually the word diet is literally anything you do daily. Just the word diet, it's like diary, comes from the word, the idea, the Latin for, or Latin, or, no, I think it's Greek, diatus Greek, um, for what you do daily. But your diet, exercise, I think we know what exercise is. Biochemistry, this would be the chemistry of your body, your, your hormones, um, your, you know, blood lipids, your, basically anything flowing through your blood. Your neurochemistry, which is the chemistry of your brain, and then solitary spirituality. But I wanna to touch on that last one real quick, solitary spirituality. So the way I define that is any part of your spiritual practice that again, builds, maintains, or optimizes your body or mind. So a lot of people have a spiritual practice that's actually, if you break it down, it's broken into solitary spirituality and social spirituality. Solitary spirituality is like praying or meditating right? It's something you do generally by yourself and it actually puts you, it changes your state. It changes the state of your body and your mind. And it has a physical and physiological component to it. So we're not delving into the theology or the belief set behind the practice. We're just talking about where the practice itself fits in terms of the three Ps. The things you do spiritually by yourself tend to actually fit into the physical category. And then, as you'll probably guess, the social spirituality, which is like, oh, I go to, I go to a place of worship and I meet my friends and we talk about these things and it's, it's more, it involves, remember, relationships of direct connection or impact, that's gonna go in the, uh, in the personal category. Okay, and then personal, the components of the personal area of your life, these are relationships involving direct connection or impact, right? So what's the number one relationship in your life? It is the relationship with yourself. That's actually the first component. Personal development is all about first uh, making that relationship with yourself objective and less emotional and then actually going to work on it. But obviously beyond self, you have family, you have friends, you have coworkers, you have neighbors and community, although community can tend into more professional if it's not community you actually directly interact with. And then you have that social spirituality component that I talked about, which again, it's a lot of time people kind of they kind of commingle their spiritual life or their, their, you know, that part of their life. But again, there's part of it that really impacts you physically and there's part of it that's about connection socially. And then we have the professional area of your life, whatever you do to get paid. 
um, your brand, and I do encourage you to believe that everyone in this world has a brand. All a brand is, is what do people say about you when you're not in the room? Your brand could be, I don't know, that guy that sits at his desk and mumbles all the time and doesn't get to know any of us. That could be your brand. And that guy, if you're that guy, you might be sitting there mumbling yourself, I don't know, I don't have a brand, nobody cares, nobody talks about me. I promise you, your brand is the guy that sits at his desk and mumbles and never talks to any of us. You have a brand, right? Maybe you wanna work on that. So how you get paid, your brand, the influence and authority that you, can, that you carry and convey in this world, esteem, respect, when you get into Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, you have esteem and respect is one of them. That that's, tends to operate in the professional realm of life. Um, I think of your resources, any resources that you have at your disposal that you could use to, remember value exchange, that you could use to exchange value in the world or to create value that you could exchange with the world. And not only resources, but potential resources. And potential resources actually can turn relationships into resources. Because you may say, oh, I have this relationship. There's a big concept in entrepreneurship. We talk about your power 100. Who are the 100 relationships you have in your life that allow you to get the things done that you want to get done, right? That's actually part of the professional area of your life or your potential resources. And ultimately, it's anything that has to do with your production capacity and or your creation or innovation capacity. Those are kind of the, the most generally applicable terms that I found to be able to describe this that applies to, to almost everyone. Okay, so to break those down again, we had the physical area of life consisting of diet, exercise, biochemistry, neurochemistry, and solitary spirituality. We had the personal area of life consisting of relationship with yourself, family, friends, coworkers, neighbors slash community, if it's community you directly engage with, and your social spirituality. And then we have the professional area of life of your life, which is however you get paid, your brand, influence and authority that you wield, resources at your disposal, potential resources at your disposal, your capacity to produce, your capacity to innovate or create. Okay, so now let's talk KPIs. I like to develop KPIs that measure what it is that I'm trying to accomplish in these areas of my life or measure what it, not even so much what I'm trying to accomplish, they measure what it is that I'm able to accomplish in these areas of my life because they're performance indicators. That's what's gonna tell me how well I can perform. So in each of these areas of life, I've come up with some basic governing principles that kind of drive this area of life. And I'll give you an example in, or, or I'll, I'll, I'll walk through them one by one. In the physical area of life, the governing principle is balance. And, and this is a balance of performance potential across the entire physical aspect of life. So there are multiple areas, multi, obviously if you have the word balance, you're like, well, what am I trying to balance? These are the different areas that you want to balance. Strength, stamina, mental sharpness, pliability, emotional equilibrium, and spiritual peace. So there's six things that we're trying to balance inside the physical category of life. So what we want to do is we want to come up with a performance indicator, some sort of metric, literally something we can measure that says, how am I doing on strength? How am I doing on stamina? How am I doing on pliability? How am I doing on emotional equilibrium? How am I doing on mental sharpness? And how am I doing on spiritual peace? So now let's talk about the governing principles of the personal area of life. And actually in the personal area of life, I actually only have one governing principle and it's a term called collaborative communication. And this derives actually from a, um, the work of a scientist or a psychologist, social scientist that I studied named Marshall Rosenberg, and he actually coined the term nonviolent communication, but I call it collaborative because I find the term nonviolent kind of raises people's guard sometimes. They're like, well, I'm not a violent person. And it's like, no, no, that's not what we mean. Collaborative communication, or as Marshall Rosenberg called it, nonviolent communication, is communication that simultaneously conveys information and deepens connection with others. So when you're communicating collaboratively or nonviolently, you're communicating in a way that is doing what, what we ultimately want and need in this world, which is deepening connection, building relationship with others, not just transferring information. And you can do this across every area of your life. You can literally do this professionally too. I, I Honestly, I, it's what I try to do in my YouTube videos. Communicate in such a way that you don't just impart information, but you also deepen connection and build relationship. That's all we mean by collaborative communication. So 
in the personal area of your life, you look at those relationships, right? You look at your relationship with yourself. How do you communicate with yourself? Are you deepening a relationship with yourself? Or are you driving a wedge between your, between your, your you know, think about it as like your, your ego and your super ego. We don't have to dissect that. I have other videos that dissect that. But like, are you bringing yourself closer to your true self? Or are you, and we all know this, are you creating that divergence where you're kind of at odds with yourself, right? And what you'll know you're at odds with yourself because a lot of your behaviors won't be lining up with your intentions, right? You'll be saying, I wanna lose weight, but I keep eating cheesecake, right? That's when you're at odds with yourself. So are you communicating with yourself in a way that deepens that connection and brings you closer to center, the center of the truth with yourself? Ditto with family. You know, I can call my wife and say like, hey, I'm just making sure you're picking up Jace at, well, Jace has his own car now. I'm making sure you're picking, picking up Jada, so it's, okay, good, great. Um, pe peace out. <laughs> Or I can say, hey, you know, how's your day? I can, I can take an extra 0.4 seconds to try to build relationship and deepen connection. I mean, in, in, in a personal relationship context like that, it's more obvious. But to be always communicating and come off of every piece of communication and say, did I deepen connection with that person? And I'll tell you, the most successful people in the world are the people. And you can go read How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And it's basically an entire book about this. It's people that no matter what you're doing with them, how you're engaging with them, their communication always feels collaborative and it always feels like it's deepening and forging the bond in the relationship. And then let's talk governing principle of the professional area of life. The governing principle is diversified growth across value channels. Remember the personal, I'm sorry, the professional area of your life was about your value exchange with others. The indirect impact and connection or impact and connection through indirect relationships, AKA your value exchange with the world, value exchange with others. If the professional area of your life is about exchanging value, then the performance metric is gonna be how much value am I developing and exchanging in those areas, the channels, the value channels where value can be exchanged. And that's why I call it diversified growth. You don't just wanna grow it in one area where value can be exchanged. Ideally, you wanna be growing it across the various areas where value can be exchanged. Why, why is one not just, just not enough? Because you don't get to decide what's valuable to the market and what's valuable to other people. You might have a technical competency that is really valuable right now. Something might change in the market and it's not as valuable anymore. And if you put all your eggs in the basket of that value channel, well now the market just voted against you and you're not as valuable anymore. So the KPIs, the performance concept, the heuristic is, am I getting more valuable across the various channels through which value can be exchanged? And so I've generalized those as to say, there are channels of finance, there are channels of authority, and there are channels of creativity. So you wanna be looking at your life and saying, am I becoming financially or commercially more valuable? And what are the KPIs that measure that? And that can be as simple as like income or EBITDA or net profit or um, you know, how big a raise you get every year, whatever. Um, I would also look at it as, uh, for, again, looking, taking a long lens, a long-term look, and I would be looking at it as like asset value and value of predictable cash flows and, and net worth, right? Not just, well, how much money am I making right now? This, again, a lot of this whole concept is about getting you to elongate your view of your life, but that's just the finance piece. What about the authority piece? How do you actually measure authority? Because authority is currency. Authority is basically money on demand when you want it. It's not realized in the, in the form of a present financial metric, but it's got that same potential all the time. Um, so how do you actually measure that? I mean, in the modern world, there actually are quantitative ways to measure authority, depending on kind of what type of authority you're wanting to measure. Social media footprint um, is one, for example, but not just the size of the footprint, but the engagement, the depth of the footprint. Um, you could look at the, the sum total of all of your lists. How do you, how, how many people are you able to reach? How many people, and it's, again, it's not, it's not just having a big email list. It's like how many people would actually open an email if I sent it to them, right? How many people can you get your message to? Um, and then how many, through indirect channels, how connected are, how, how authoritative are those people that I can reach, right? And again, I talked about the Power 100 list. So do I have a list of 100 people that would allow me to get virtually anything done I could possibly want to get done in this world? 
and even to virtually to reach virtually anyone I could possibly want to reach in this world, right? And proactively building that list. So these are these are things you can actually measure in that area of your life to say what is my authority, my potential reach, my potential to make an impact, my potential to affect change. And then finally, creativity. There is always a professional value on the ability to create and innovate in this world. And this is what makes it adaptable, right? This is what keeps you from getting pigeonholed into one value channel that, cha that, that gets reduced as the market changes. If you're known as a creator, you're known as someone that can go in and create value in any environment because you understand core value principles, that's, that's bankable long-term value, right? So how do you actually quantify that? Well, what I have found is, you know, and not to get overly spiritual, but creativity is actually energy. In fact, if you think about what defines life, life is the one place in the physical world where the second law of thermodynamics breaks down. You have energy in a system. The law of entropy says that energy in a system is always deteriorating in complexity. And yet, what is life? Life is energy increasing in complexity, right? It's things coming together. It's things going from, you know, protoplasm to amoeba to organelle to organ to mammal to human to sentient being to like we get more complex that is not actually how nature works nature goes the other way so the and, and how are we all created how or sorry how are we all born we were born through creation through an act of creation i believe that creativity derives from life and energy and so you can actually measure creative potential through things like how much energy do i have and how it, it, you know, it gets a little more fuzzy, but you know, how much joy do I have? I have, I have found that the most joyful people are the most creative people. And you can start, so again, I, I said I wasn't gonna tell you what your KPIs needed to be for these areas of life, and so I, maybe I'm starting to do that, so I'll back away. But again, try to come up with some KPIs for yourself that say, okay, this is how, how much I'm developing in the, in the financial value channel of life. This is how much I'm developing in the authority value channel of life. And this is how much I'm developing in the creativity value channel of life. Now, once you've done that, once you've broken these into their components, and then you've defined the governing principles, you've identified the blockers embedded into any of those components, and you've developed KPIs to measure against those governing principles in all the different areas in which they show up, you now have built what I call, or what I believe is the ultimate framework for living and functioning most effectively all the time. I hope that you've gotten some value out of this. And, and even if you didn't stop the video and you didn't take the notes and you didn't define the terms and you didn't identify the components and find the blockers and define the KPIs and all that, at least hopefully I have inspired you to think about your life in a more organized way, in a more schematic way, because when you get your you know what together and you get real organized and intentional about how you live, it is unbelievable what you can accomplish. Hey, if you liked this video, then you're gonna love this video. Thoughtless communication internally is always gonna be the catalyst to the actions that result in self-sabotage. So if you become very intentional about being thoughtful in everything you say, including what you say to yourself, you actually make self-sabotage impossible.